What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to Injection of Inspiration. Hope you guys are doing well. Graham GSM Matthews here, where every single Saturday I give you your daily dose of motivational advice, helpful tips, etc., etc. Episode 12 here today? Episode 13? I think it's episode 13. I'm losing track. I record these so far in advance, I really don't know anymore. But uh, I did touch upon this topic briefly early on in the series. I think it was episode 3, 2 or 3, where I talked about how you know you have found the one um, so a couple months ago, but I wanted to kind of go more in depth with that just because I didn't, and a lot of the videos, I mean, a lot of these videos and life lessons and morals and shit like that can be applied to your love life relationships and stuff like that. But I wanted to go more in depth with something I feel that we all really have experience with and maybe not everybody, but I feel 99% of us, regardless of where you are in life's journey, um, do have some sort of experience uh, you know, some sort of experience or memory or are currently dealing with or will deal with at some point in the future, heartbreak. And that goes along with, you know, with trusting people. And it really kind of goes hand in hand, both literally and figuratively with a lot of the stuff I've talked about here on the show in the past. And I wanted to bring it up on this specific episode um, just because it was exactly one year ago today, March 11th, 2016, that um, I had one of the worst days of my life. That not dealing with death, uh, probably the worst day of my life, or one of the worst days of my life, that didn't deal with um, having someone that, that you know, where someone had passed away. Other than death, I think this was ha- the absolute worst I've ever felt, at least in a long, long time. I mean, at least in five years, and it had to do with heartbreak. So I won't go every single detail of the story. It would take a long fucking time. Um, but like I had said, I think it's kind of a, a solid follow-up to that how you know you have found the one video um, that I did a couple months ago just because when you do know you have found the one, I mean, you, you, you may feel that way several times in your lifetime. You may find one person that you feel is the one and that's it. You're in a relationship. You get married, blah, 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 happily ever after. But there may come several points in your life where you feel if you have found the one on several different, different occasions and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Yeah, you know, it, it could be at one point in your life, it can come later, and it really, there's no, you know, there's nothing wrong with finding that one person, regardless of whether you're young. It could happen in middle school, I think it, I've talked about it before, but I do think it's very unlikely that you'll find the person that I believe, and, and some people don't find that person, I truly do believe there's someone out there for everyone, but um, it, it could really not come if you feel you're happy by yourself, which I felt for a very long time. But at any rate, I have said before that you may very not likely find that person that completes you, I guess, to sound corny, at the risk of sounding corny in high school. Um, but it could come in college. It can come in your late 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. It could really come at any age. And when you do... I mean, love is a great thing, but at the same time, it could very, it could be very, very difficult just because you're really putting your trust in someone else's hands, and you're wearing your heart on your sleeve, so to speak, uh, and telling someone all about yourself and your your deepest, darkest secrets, blah, 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 again, at the risk of sounding corny, when you feel that you have found the one, and I mean, it could, it could be love at first sight, I've heard that before, I've never really felt that way for me a lot of the people I've been seriously interested in that I've been seriously interested in I've only been interested in after I got to know them a little more and again that's just me but after talking with someone spending time with someone to me that's when you really get to know a person and and know that you really like this person or more than like or love or whatever again love is a weird weird is a weird word to throw around depending on how old you are and how much experience with it you have i feel a lot of people just toss that word around just meaninglessly nowadays and i mean i i found that when i was a lot younger uh when i was in high school and i would do the same exact thing so i'm not even excluding myself from this conversation whatsoever but at any rate um, I've been interested in quite a few people over the years that have resulted in quite a few stories that I think some of you are familiar with. Um, but the most recent one came about a year ago where I had met someone that I was seriously interested in. Not not just an interest, but to the point where I was seriously invested. And um, it had came over the course of a couple months and one thing happened to, you know, one thing happened after another. And I think the key in all of this is you got to tell someone if you feel that person is for you and that you feel that you may love them um, again or seriously interested. I don't know which word to use here, which phrase to use, but um, 
you got to let them know how you feel. You cannot go forever without telling that person. For one thing, um, you got to come clean at some point. Otherwise, you may forever regret it. Um, if something were to ever happen or someone else came along or whether something happened to you or them or whatever, or you drifted apart or they moved away, blah, 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 you'll forever regret not telling them how you feel and not knowing what could have been. So for one thing, I feel like that, that came to a point with me where with this specific person that I was like, I got to tell him because if I don't, I'm going to feel heartbroken. I'll feel, um, I'll regret not doing it in the end. So I feel it's better to come clean about it. And even if they don't feel the same way or if it's a no or blah, 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 you're going to feel heartbroken as I'll talk about in a second, but at least you'll know. And I mean, again, it's different for everybody. I know there's an argument to to be made with ignorance being bliss and you'll never quite know. And maybe there was a chance had you not told them. So there is something to be said for that. But at the same time, I found more pride and more, um, you know, being able to rest easy, knowing that it was a no or a yes, or they did feel the same way or they didn't feel the same way. That's just how I feel. And at the same time, I'm not going to say you have you have nothing to lose. Maybe you very well do, because it might have come after a point where you've spent a lot of months with this person, many years with this person as a good friend, best friend, maybe not a good friend at all. And uh, you don't want to ruin that relationship. That's another aspect of it that uh, that can be you know talked about as well. That can be analyzed as well. And for me, I've, I've probably said this before in past videos, but I don't get too stressed out about things I know that will work themselves out in time. Things that I don't complain about things knowing that I have full control over, knowing that, okay, either I do have full control over or I don't have full control over. And as I've said multiple times, countless times in the past, everything happens for a reason, which also can be applied to heartbreak and love and all that other shit, which I'll also talk about in a second. And this story has a happy ending as well. But um, going back to what I was saying earlier, uh, just just for me, for a lot of the things like with school or with, I don't know, something that's happening family related or whatever, if it's in my control, I won't complain about it because there's something I can do about it. If there's nothing I can do about it, then I can't complain knowing that it will just work itself out over time. But with love, love is a weird exception because obviously you can't make someone love you. There's really, I mean, there's a lot you can do to show them your, your true colors or who you are and whatever. They may not give you a chance. Uh, they, you know, they may not get a chance, give you the chance to kind of show them who you really are and why you should like them, whatever. But at the same time, nine times out of 10, you can't make someone love you. You can't buy their love. Um, chances are after you've spent several months with this person, they probably know what you're about, what you stand for, who you are, and whether they like you or not, regardless of how you feel about them. I mean, there could be a chance that they may not feel much towards you and you say that you like them and maybe they come around and they give you a chance, blah, blah, blah. That's a obviously a possibility as well. Um, but that was like one thing that really hit me hard about a year ago with someone I was seriously interested in that there was nothing I could do. I mean, if they're not interested, they're not interested, but it's also hard to move on from someone when you're that invested and you're that, I don't know, you like someone that much knowing they don't like you, you, you ask yourself, what's next? What's this next step? And that was me one year ago today on March 11th, 2016. Um, I had come clean to this person. It was, I don't, it's, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to put into words. I don't want to say it was like the best thing I ever did. Um, but it was one of the hardest things I ever had to do again, not including death and stuff. I think putting my dog down about seven, eight years ago was definitely one of, if not the hardest thing I've ever had to do, but that notwithstanding, I think this was the most, uh, definitely the most not frightening or fearful or whatever, but, um, it was tough. You, it was tough to you know, to really actually go through with that. I, I told myself that I would. I had momentum on my side after what had been a, a really, really, really good week. So I said, if I don't do it now, I'll never have as good of a chance to do this ever again. Uh, so I talked to the person and I had no idea what their relationship status was or whatever. I was just really kind of not even asking this person out. I was just more so kind of coming forward with how I felt, knowing that I at least got it over with. And this was right before a big break too. So Regardless of what the answer was, I wouldn't have to see this person for another week, week and a half. So at least I could have time to decompress if it was not the answer that I was looking for. And in the end, they had said that they were in a relationship with someone else. They already had history with someone back home or whatever. And uh, again, as proud as I was for my of myself for, for doing it and going forward um, with my feelings and telling them how I actually felt... 
I was glad I got it over with, but at the same time, I was like, it's over. Like all these fun months I've spent trying to get to know this person and really feeling happier than I have in a long fucking time and at least several years. Um, you will not know true happiness until you experience true happiness. It's really kind of hard to put into words. Um, but knowing that it was over, or at least thinking that it was over, thinking that things may not be the same ever again beyond that point, really shook me to the core. And it was at that point, and I've, I've read before on like uh, inspirational quotes and all this other shit, that I completely agree with. It's the people that make you happiest that also make you saddest. And those are the people that you love, really, in a nutshell. Um, and this was one of those people that I considered a really good friend that I had an interest in. And it was basically just, the, the feeling was not mutual, to put it lightly. And again, it wasn't one of those things where I felt sad. I just, it was one of those weird, 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 weird times where in other situations like that, I felt heartbroken. In this situation, I felt heartbroken too. But not as much as I ever have before. Like in this instance, uh, this was probably the most heartbroken I've ever been. Because uh, it's a feeling, again, I can't really put into words. You experience, you, you feel nothing. Like you feel all these certain emotions all at once. Um, it's really a, a hard emotion to explain, to really put into words, and just that I was feeling all these things at once. I was happy, I was proud that I got it over with, I was happy I finally did it, but at the same time, I was like, okay, but it wasn't the answer that I was looking for, I spent all this time trying to get to know this person all these many months, and I mean, the longer you're invested, the longer you're with someone, the longer you're in love or whatever with someone, the harder it's going to be to kind of come detached from that person if it's not the answer that you're looking for, if, if the feeling's not mutual. I mean, it, it could also go both ways, too. I'm not saying if, if it's if someone had told you, you know, they don't like you back or they'll never be interested or whatever. It's a two-way street. You could either give up and move on, but at the same time, if you really, really like someone, either A, you'll still, I think you'll still love someone regardless. I feel like with feelings like that, those feelings never go away. I'm a true believer in that. But at the same time, um, I think all, something can also be said for continuing to go on and at least continuing to try. Maybe not putting forth 100% effort and uh, not changing your approach. Or maybe you do want to change your approach. It's Again, it's all dependent on either your situation and who you are. If you feel like continuing to chase this person and go after this person and pursue this person is going to make you happier, then I would say continue to do it until they either change their mind or at least you know for a fact they will never ever be interested in you. Or on the flip side, maybe continuing to pursue that person knowing that there isn't a chance there or maybe there is a slight chance that's what's motivate you. That, that That's what motivates you. But um, at the same time, if pursuing this person is what makes you unhappy and after you know getting that answer and getting that response and um, you're not really sure where to go from there, I would say just time away is probably the best thing that you can do. Not interacting with that person. If they're trying to interact with you, that's one thing, but I would not make an attempt. I would just kind of give yourself time to think it over. Just kind of uh, analyze what your next step is because that was kind of the biggest question going through my mind at that time. And at that point a year ago today, I was a junior in college. So I'm thinking to myself, and this was something I had thought about for a long time in like the weeks and months leading up to this and, and that if this doesn't work out, I'm pretty much done. Like, I'm done in the quote-unquote world of romance, whatever, just because I just don't like being disappointed. And being disappointed in other aspects is one thing, but to really, really... And it's not even that I was expecting a yes, it was more so just that I had put all this effort and really all my heart into this one endeavor, and it didn't work out. Like, with the WWE, it's a different thing. Like, if you or you know, getting a job that you really, really want. If they tell you no at first, you're going to continue doing it. Obviously, you're going to be heartbroken. You're going to be a bit disencouraged uh, at, at first. But if you keep working towards it, maybe it's a goal that can be accomplished. With something like that, though, you know, businesses and things like that can, you know, you can improve at something over time. Having someone fall in love with you, you can't, you can't change that. I mean, unless they do feel that same way. Otherwise, they're going to feel that way at, at the get-go. Or maybe they change their mind down the line, which is, that's, you know, storybook, fairy tale level shit right there. Um, that doesn't, that's not really realistic. And I think people sometimes think it is. And maybe it is. Maybe that does happen from time to time. Um, but if that's the case and they really did not have that same love for you in the first place, then they might never have that same love for you. They're just having second thoughts or you're a rebound. And if you're okay with that, that's cool to each their own. But um, yeah, for me anyway, I had that question running through my mind. What's next? Where do I go from here? That was the one, th not the one thing, but uh, the primary thing at that time that had made me 
that had motivated me to keep going on this chase. And it can be, you know, another argument can be made that the chase is more exciting than finally getting what you want. And I've talked about it before. I said it in the, um, in the how you know you have found the one video that the longer you wait to find that person or that person finds you, coincidentally, uh, the more it's going to mean in the end. And that's exactly what happened to me. Again, I said this story would have a happy ending, so that may not have worked out the way I wanted to. Um, it was a bit weird at first for like the first maybe month, month and a half, because I again, you just don't really know where to go at that point. It's not like you can just move on and getting with someone just despite the person you were previously interested in, regardless of whether they're your ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, previous love interest, whatever, just to just to get them jealous is so stupid. That's so fucking like fifth grade level bullshit. That's so middle school. Uh, that's this, It's not going to work. That's not how it works in the real world. Jealousy is not a, I mean, it's a real emotion, but that's not, you know, that's not a way to get someone to fall in love. It's just stupid. That's fucking stupid. Um, but anyway, that being said, it just, it's all going to work out in time. That's the number one thing you have to keep in mind when something like this happens. Um, I mean, in this case, I'm talking about heartbreak, but it could really come with anything. I've talked about it in the death video. Um, if you don't get what you want right away, you can't be discouraged. In this case, it might be a bit different because, like I said, you can't really make someone fall in love with you. You can't really improve yourself. I mean, I guess you can, and maybe the, you can ask again and see what happens after. I and mean, if there's something about you that they don't like or whatever, you shouldn't change who you are for someone else. You have to be 100% content and happy with yourself in order to find that person, and I found that myself. Um, it's all going to work out in due time. You can't be disencouraged. You can't be discouraged for too long. You can't be sitting in the dumps for too long and let that um, unhappiness overcome you and really overcome every other facet of your life. And it did for me for a long time. After that point, I think another two months had gone by where it was just, it was almost, it was actually, it was actually two months later that I was done with college. So on that day when everything seemingly, seemingly fell apart for me, I was like, okay, so where the fuck do I go from here? And I've got two months left and I have like three or four classes with this person, so ignoring them really is not an option. And it's not like I don't want to be friends. And again, I've said before, as I said earlier in the video, if you really care that much about a person, giving your some time away from that person is one thing, but to completely cut them off and not at least be friends is just, to me, I feel like that's dumb. You weren't in it for the right reasons to begin with. If you were just in it to, to hook up and get, you know, whatever, do stupid shit, that's fine. You know, that's cool. That's not really love, in my opinion. That's kind of something else that's completely different, and everyone else has their definition of love or whatever the fuck else they want to call it. But um, I don't know. I feel like when you experience an emotion like that, that's true love or true romance, whatever. I don't want to get cliche here. I don't want to get all sappy on you guys. But again, you just got to know in your mind that it's all going to pass um, in time. And for me, it kind of came at certain points in the rest of the semester. I had two months left. And it all kind of worked itself out in the end. I'm still good friends with that person to this day, even a year later. Um, and it just ended up working out that even over the summer, I'm like, okay, so that didn't work out. Where do I go from here? And I felt the sense of emptiness, the sense of emptiness for the first time in either a long time, if not ever. And then, as I had said, everything happens for a reason because that didn't work out. I ended up meeting my current girlfriend who I had already previously met. Long story. I talked about it in that, how you know you have found the one video uh, a couple months ago. I ended up meeting her again that August, and it all worked itself out, and we've been in a relationship for the past six, seven months, so uh, that's just the way that it works out. I'm not saying it's going to, there's no carbon copy, there's no rules to follow, it's different for everybody, you just got to give yourself time. Those feelings will not subside in a day, it might take a week, it might take a month, but you have to know those tough times will pass, and I've said that before, that was the topic, that was the title of my very first fucking video, my very first fucking video for Injection of Inspiration that you have to know that tough times won't last. Tough people do. Tough times won't last, though. You just got to stay strong, know within yourself that... And another thing, too, and I, I probably said in that video as well, and as I alluded to earlier, you can't change yourself for someone else. Even if they if they don't like who you are, then they're not worth your time. They're not worth your fucking time. You can't change yourself. If there's something about yourself that you don't like, excuse me, that's one thing, to improve on that facet of... like. There, there's certain things about me, not physically, but... Um, just like things I know I could be better at or that could be worked on, um, whether they be skills or spending more time with your family and friends and all this other shit. I mean, there, that's, there's something to be said for that, but if there's something about you that one person doesn't like, if you like football and that person, you know, hates the fact that you like football, not the fact that they hate football. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about, but the fact that they like that, that they don't like that you like football, then they're not worth your time. They're not worth your fucking time. 
For me, it's wrestling. If they can't, and I'm not saying they have to be a wrestling fan. Uh, my girlfriend isn't. She tolerates wrestling. She watches wrestling with me, and it's an optimal situation. I'm really fucking lucky, but if they don't at least tolerate wrestling in my mind, or they don't like the fact I'm a wrestling fan, or they think it's stupid or whatever, then they're not worth my fucking time, because that's who I am. That's exactly who I am, and I'm not going to change who I am for someone else. Um, even if you care about them that much, it's hard to say goodbye, or it's hard to kind of move on from that, but you got to keep that in mind. So I apologize for the fucking 20-minute video. I know I tend to go along with a lot of these Injection of Inspiration series videos, um, but hopefully you got something out of this. Again, it's a, it's a time where we all experience at one point in our lives. Again, it could really come at any time. There's no blueprint for the journey of life. You can experience this in middle school, high school, um, you know, later on in life, college, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, up until the day you die. It does not matter. And uh, heartbreak, is a, it's a terrible feeling. It's something that, you know, it just takes time to kind of get over. But it does subside in time. It's not something that will stay forever. Um, so just got to keep that in mind. If you are going through it right now or at some point in the future, um, you just got to stay true to yourself. And you can't let those questions, you know, overcome you. Like I said, what's next? And I know that's the first thing on your mind as it was for me. And maybe it isn't, but I think in most cases it is. Uh, where you're asking yourself, what's next? What do I have to do? Am I not good enough? I know there's another question. A lot of people ask themselves, you are good enough. Just because one person did not like you does not mean that the rest of the world will not like you. Uh, there's someone out there for everyone. And if you're the type of person that enjoys being by themselves, such as me, and I thought I would never really find that stable relationship that I have right now, that's completely fine too. I think there are people that, not that they're not destined to find someone, I think there is someone out there for everyone. It just takes time to find that person. Um, but I, you, you just can't be dis... Dis discouraged um, with stuff like that. You just got to give it time and you just got to focus on yourself and find things that keep you busy and keep you happy and keep your mind on other endeavors and just put that same effort that you would towards a relationship towards your job or so towards something else that you enjoy and you'll reap the benefits of life. So just keep those, you know, two cents, those thoughts in mind, uh, that stuff in mind. And I'll talk about maybe other relationship related stuff in the future because I know I've got a fucking million stories about it and shit like that from past years uh, that might other people might be related to, might be able to relate to and all that other shit. But uh, at any rate, this is just one 21-year-old's two cents on heartbreak and relationships and all the other stuff I've talked about here on the show. Check out all the previous installments of Injection of Inspiration right here on the channel. I appreciate your support. Drop a like if you like it or you disliked it, whatever. Um, if you like the video, you know, give a thumbs up, leave a comment, share the video, subscribe to the channel first and foremost for more daily content, wrestling related and not so wrestling related for stuff like this. And um, yeah, that's about it, guys. So just enjoy your weekend. Just have a great fucking weekend. That's all I can really implore you to do right now. Just That's all I can implore you to do. Have an awesome weekend. Have a stellar Saturday. I'm Graham Gison Matthews. I'll catch you guys right back here on Saturday of next week for an all-new episode of Injection of Inspiration. And until then, I'll catch you guys down the road.